Uh, well, so our esteemed chair, AJ, is not joining us tonight, and uh, I'll be running uh, this meeting as chair. Um, I suppose um, we can go ahead and call it to order. Is there a desire or need for us to identify various people on the call? Um, just the, I, I noticed a few boxes that we haven't uh, identified yet, I guess, and, and do we need to, to identify those folks for any reason at this point? Uh, I don't, if you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves, we are supposed to have a student here tonight, so it might be good just to explain who we are, what we do. Uh, hi, I'm Keon Sater. I'm with Troop 73, and I'm working on the communication, it, it, uh, the citizenship in the community merit badge, and I am attending this meeting for it. Great. Well, welcome. We're, we're glad to have you. Definitely. Um, so it's obviously a little different than if we were in person, but um, I hope you you enjoy it. Feel free to you know ask questions if you have them. Um, it's uh, it's it's an important job. This is one of the the city's uh, commissions. You know, there's various commissions and boards that you can volunteer for, um, just as part of your your civic duty. Obviously, you have a you have a strong sense of that already. Um, but th this is a particularly important board. I think it, it's it's um, we, we, we're obviously the ethics commission. We handle, uh, we see a lot of different things, but tonight we're going to have a, a discussion of an advisory opinion. That's one of our chief roles is giving kind of ethics related advice to members of the government and, um, employees and things. So we'll kind of walk through that tonight. Um, there, there's going to be parts of this that will go into confidential session, at which point, you know, you'll, you'll kind of be in a separate waiting room or, or however they handle it. But, Otherwise, just feel free to, to ask questions if you have them or and definitely welcome. We're glad to have you. So I guess at the beginning here, I need to say for the record, uh, I guess I'll call the meeting to order officially and say for the record that due to the COVID-19 state of emergency, this meeting is being held by a live video teleconference pursuant to 2020 Senate Bill 150 and in accordance with KRS 61-826. So that having been said, I will look at the agenda here and we have six items. The first being AO 202103. This is a request for an advisory opinion. Confidentiality of the opinion has been waived, I will note. And it's from a Miss Nancy Albright. Has everybody had a chance to review? And I guess I'll, I'll give everybody a chance, a couple minutes to look at look in their, their packet for the meeting and refresh their memory of what this request uh, concerns. It's a nepotism related issue. And uh, just take a minute and, and kind of refresh your memory about what this, this request concerns. So do we have um, the requester present via video conference tonight? Ms. Albright is here, yes. Okay, oh, there you are. Hello, Ms. Albright. Thank you for joining us. Um, Hello. If, if you want, can you just kind of explain to us, we, had, we obviously have your written materials that you've submitted as part of this request. But if there's anything additional or just, you know, briefly summarize what, what you're trying to, trying to figure out here tonight. Sure. So I'll try not to, to um, overlap with, with what was in the opinion request, but we have a situation where Mr. Sam Clark has been hired by the city and in two different times during his employment has kind of been reorganized in a capacity where his brother has become his direct line supervisor. And then he's been kind of reorganized back out and took a promotion and then got reorganized back under his brother, Ernie, and then was seeking another promotion and was denied the opportunity to um, be considered for that position because of the um, nepotism. In, at play. He still would not have been a direct report, but he would have been a higher position under his brother. And at that point, the decision was um, that the reason he could not be considered was because 
his brother should not be in his chain of command, so to speak. And so um, Mr. Sam Clark felt that that was inappropriate and filed a grievance requesting reconsideration. And at that point, my decision was that the maybe the, the clearest way to have this decision made with the fact that he's his brother Ernie is not his direct supervisor but his second line supervisor was to seek an opinion of clarification from this body. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Is Mr. Clark or, or are you the sole representative concerning this matter here this evening or is there anybody else uh, on here? Um, Mr. Clark has been sent the email, but I don't see him. I thought I saw his name. He's on here. He might be just on the phone. Oh, so yep, he's here. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, hi, Sam. How you doing? Good, good. So thanks for being here tonight. Um, you, no I suppose uh, before we we you know, really dig into it. Does anybody have any questions on the commission uh, for Commissioner Albright at this time concerning what she stated or what she submitted? I guess, Commissioner Albright, this is Matt Ellison. What, to help me understand kind of in terms of a second level supervisor, which is the term that is used, I think, in the request and a term that you've used, what exactly is what I guess the practical aspects of being a second line supervisor? What all does that involve from either a supervisory or managerial standpoint uh, over a lower ranking employee? Well, this is a somewhat loose interpretation, probably, of understanding if there's someone from law or HR that wants to give a more definitive um, explanation, I'd happily yield. My understanding would be um, somewhat of an appeal and a direction uh, nature both. So from a direction nature, uh, Ernie Clark would assign tasks and, and oversee and approve work at the crew level and then the crew leaders actually direct the folks on each crew with the daily task. So Ernie, and I, I apologize for the informality, but uh, it's a lot easier to use their first names. Um, so Ernie would not necessarily assign work directly to Sam. He would assign work to Sam's supervisor at a little broader level of where work needs to be accomplished every week. And then that supervisor then works with the concrete crew to make sure the work gets carried out. In this case, uh, Michael Jordan, um, I think. Um, so, and then, you know, usually, typically one of the, the, the other aspects that we talk to our employees about is if something has happened and you take it to your supervisor and you feel like it was not answered to your satisfaction of any particular nature, um, you would appeal that decision to your second line supervisor as you kind of go up seeking clarification. So if, for instance, Sam brought something to his supervisor's um, attention that he thought would needed to be addressed differently and his supervisor um, gave him an answer that he did not find satisfactory for most of us our next step would be to to take that decision to your supervisor's supervisor which in this case would be sam's brother does that help I, that brings up another question for me commissioner all right so um for personnel matters, if Sam was reprimanded, would he be reprimanded by his first line supervisor? Typically, it could come from higher than that, but typically you would go to your first line supervisor would be where that would come from, yes. And then if he um, had an objection to that reprimand, would it then go to his brother? Theoretically, yes. Okay. And so his brother is basically the first line supervisor of Sam's first line supervisor. That's, that's yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Albright, I, I wanted to ask you one quick question and I think that 
this all came in a packet. So if you're not familiar with the, this particular document, but it, on one of the grievance forms, it indicates that, um, and I'm not sure who prepared it, but it says, was not allowed to interview because of nepotism, but has been working in this type of situation for the past 10 years that was approved by LFUCG law department. Do you know what, what that refers to or what that might refer to? I don't exactly. I do know that um, that came up when I was reviewing the grievance form and um, for better or for worse, uh, there is no paper trail or documentation that was sort of, I think, a general understanding um, that existed at the time Sam was hired, but, but that's all I really know. Was you not on the phone with me when Ernie gave you a name of a lady's name that left the law department and went to Gray Construction, or was that uh, or was that Kim Nesbitt? Do you mind if I answer that? Sure. Okay, uh, Sam, I do remember being on the phone with the lady from Gray Construction. Uh, I was not able to get a hold of her. You remember her name? Uh, I might have it written down. So, so can I get a little bit more clarification, Commissioner? Um, so is it, I'm trying to understand that, okay, so Sam has been working in this job without complaint for a decade is what I'm hearing. So was it without complaint or was it by approval by the, the government? You know, there's, because there's a difference there. I, I can't, I don't know that I can answer that. Nancy, if I may speak. Please, Glenda, yes. There is no one in the law department, no previous employee at the, in the law department who now works for Great Construction. And I am the, before Evan, 10 years ago, I would have been the only person in the law department who would have been answering these issues. And I did not approve this. Well, as soon as my brother gets back from vacation, I will get the lady's name from her, from him, because he gave it to Miss Albright and she is working for great, great construction. Um, okay. And the reason I know this is because he was taken downtown on a nepotism charge as he got the supervisor to position. I'm sorry to interrupt, but my, my, my internet is unstable and I got, as soon as Glenda started talking, I, it kicked me off. Can somebody just summarize what Glenda said about that answer to that question? Yes, ma'am. I can repeat that, Ms. Gunther. I am not aware of any former employee of the Department of Law who works for Great Construction. I have been the primary attorney until Evan started working on this, who handles ethics issues for 25 years. And I have never approved a situation like this. Okay. Thank you, Ms. George. Thank you. So are there any additional questions that we have for Commissioner Albright at this time? Commissioner, uh, Evan Thompson, how are you doing? Um, Hi. Um, I just had a question just to help the commission understand. Um, in your um, advisory opinion, it mentions uh, is uh, in the discussion of all of the re the reorganizations back and forth, and it says the the last reorganization it says a later reorganization moved Sam's crew back under Ernie. Do you remember when that was? The last reorganization that moved them to Ernie. Um, yeah, let me check some notes, and I apologize. I've got family downstairs, so I'm standing upstairs trying to <laughs> organize myself a little bit. Um, Let's see. I, I believe the manhole. Um, I want to say it was June of 2019 was the beginning of a reorganization based on the departure of one of our managers or supervisors. When he transferred to waste management, uh, Streets and Roads went through a reorganization and decided to 
uh, only have two super two of the that level of supervisor instead of three, and the crews were reorganized. And at that time, the crew that Sam is on was transferred under. He had been under the supervisor that left, and and was transferred back under his crew was transferred back under earnings supervision. Okay, and could you also explain the difference between operate uh, what operations supervisor Ernie Clark does and what operations supervisor Kevin Dennis does? They have similar responsibilities with different crews, so they are over. Kevin primarily focuses on a lot of the tree work, but not exclusively manhole work. Ernie does a lot of the concrete potholes. So similar responsibilities as far as assigning work, but different specific crew tasks. And just for, for uh, Ethics Commission's understanding, I don't know if it was explained earlier, but you're the Commissioner of uh, Econo or, uh, Environmental Quality and Public Works, right? Yes, sir. And that's um, it's also then above uh, streets and yeah, this division, streets and roads. Correct, right. That's and I apologize. Know. I want to make a quick uh, correction. I believe that that uh, transfer out happened in March of 2020. So he was assigned under Alex Hicks in 2019, and then assigned. And then when Alex left in 2020, they. Um, they reorganized to do away with that position and he moved back under Ernie or his crew did. Okay. Any other questions for the commissioner at this time? Okay, Mr. Clark, I, I think uh, unless there's an objection, if you, if you have anything to add to what the commissioner has already stated, um, I think the commission will certainly hear what you have to say. Um, so please uh, let it, let us know any thoughts you might have. All right. Well, me and her have, I have sat down and talked. Um, the, one of the biggest questions is, is okay. <clears throat> when I got hired in, I was hired in as a trades worker senior. I worked eight years. I applied for a equipment operator senior job and I got it. No questions asked, no uh, arguments, nothing. At the time that I'd done my upgrade to equipment operator senior on the same crew that I am still on from the day I started, there was no if, ands, buts, no problems, no nothing about me getting that position interviewing for it, nothing. So then here six, well, about three months ago, I applied for a small engine mechanic position, which would have been a lateral transfer for me because the lateral, the small engine mechanic and the trade and the equipment operator senior are the same grade. So there would have been no money exchanged there wouldn't have had to have been any type of money it would i've been i would have just been a only thing would have changed would have been a title the question biggest question was is what changed nobody has been able to answer that simple question there was a six month span when i first started that Tony King was in the position that Ernie is in now that I was hired in and I was under uh, Robert Bishop. Ernie took over Tony's position after Tony left. Uh, Robert Bishop moved over to the Manho crew, took over it. Um, Alex Hicks, became supervisor over the crew that I am still currently on. Then we went there for a while. Then they decided to open up a second Super 2 to give Ernie some relief from all the different crews that he was running because he was over every bit. He was the only Super 2 for streets and roads for, I think, like 
three or four years before they added Alex. Then Alex became a super two. Ernie was still over the concrete crew, the manhole crew, and all that. Mike Thomas took Alex's position. Mike Thomas, not a year later, gets a position higher. He moves on. They hire in Adam Tackett. Adam Tackett. When he came in, that is when the year of Alex being over my crew started. He was there less than six months, moved from supervisor over my crew to safety commissioner or safety, whatever they wanted to call him for streets and roads. And that's when, when, when Michael Jordan took over as supervisor on my crew. Alex then left six months later and they put us back under Ernie. So only for a year in six months has my crew not been under my brother. And you can go back and you can ask anybody in there and it, and it, it won't even matter. You can even ask the people that don't like us and go back and look at the work that we have put out no matter if it was for downtown, for the department, for the state even. There's not been a job one that we've ever turned down and not done professional. But nobody can answer the simple question of what changed? Who filed a complaint? Who has a problem now all of a sudden because I wanted to become a mechanic, not even under Ernie. It would have been under, still had another supervisor between me and Ernie. I would not have been a direct contact. I still have one person in between me, just like I have been for the past 10 years. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clark. Does the commission have any specific questions for Mr. Clark at this time? Okay, um, at this time, I think that I'll entertain a motion to uh, move into closed session so the commission can discuss um, this matter in private. So moved. And that's a closed okay. session. Hold on, let me just make sure that's closed session pursuant to CARA 618101F uh, because it's dealing with a potential appointment of a, or other matters relating to a specific personnel or individual. Yes. Okay, so uh, I'll second. All right, hearing you having the motion, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll move into closed session. So we're gonna, this is the uh, confidential portion, so. Um, Just a moment, Mr. Chair, and I'll put everyone in the waiting room. Thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone. Thank you for, for your patience. The commission has, has discussed this matter. And at this time, uh, well, let me first say that we will follow up with this with a written advisory opinion. Um, at this time, we have determined that the facts as presented to us do represent a violation of the Ethics Act. The relationship of the clerks and their direct supervisory role, even though it's once removed a second supervisory role, we do find that is within the Ethics Act. This is not a particularly new issue um, for the Ethics Commission. You know, this does has come up from time to time. We have written opinions that are similar in facts to these, um, not necessarily you know, exactly the same, but that these previous decisions of the Ethics Commission have helped guide us in finding our decision here tonight. Fundamentally, we want to see this worked out as I'm sure everybody involved does. So Commissioner Albright, um, the, com the Ethics Commission, you, you came obviously seeking our, our uh, opinion, our, our advice, and we definitely encourage you to explore a solution um, within uh, how, however you can figure it out basically that, that is complies with the Ex Ethics Act that's, um, that basically results in the clerks not having a, a supervisory relationship um, that we find is within uh, the prohibitions of nepotism within the Ethics Act. We want this obviously 
to be done quickly. Uh, this is a, a ongoing uh, violation of the Ethics Act. Um, so we do want, as of immediately, that we would recommend that uh, Ernie Clark recuse himself from any action relating to the employment or discipline of his brother. We don't think he should be uh, making any decisions with respect to his brother going forward. Um, now, we're hopeful that you can figure that this can be resolved. Um, you know, we don't pretend to, to have the, the solution, but we, we encourage you to look for solutions. Um, we ask that in 90 days at our next regular meeting, you come back and tell us what you've done, how you, how you figured it out, and uh, we'll be glad to hear it at that point. Um, obviously, we, we don't want anybody to, to be, be disappointed, but uh, we do think that it's our job here to look at the, the facts as they are and, and the Ethics Act as it is. And, you know, I, I hear Mr. Clark when he says that uh, what's changed, and, and ultimately I can say that the Ethics Commission is, is now aware of it, and, and it's our duty as, as, as members of the commission to, to call a violation when we see it. And so ultimately, uh, we appreciate you guys coming to us. We think that this is an important matter. This is obviously what we're here for. So we will issue a written opinion that is substantially consistent with what I've just said. I um, will also now ask for a motion, whether I guess in substance, what I have described uh, is the commission in favor of a, an advisory opinion to that extent. So moved. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it appears that motion passes. Again, Commissioner Albright, Mr. Clark, uh, thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, we, we do hope you will join us again in 90 days, uh, give or take, but you know, I'm not exactly sure when the next meeting date is, but it's in roughly 90 days. And uh, hopefully we can, we can further uh, move on from this and in a, in a in a positive way and, and really just get things straightened out. I can let everybody know when the next meeting is. Um, I believe it's in November, but um, I will let Ms. Albright and Mr. Clark know so that they're aware and they can attend the meeting if they want. And Thank I just you. Want to go ahead and state just uh, on behalf of the commission, we do not, none of what the commission's findings are are based upon any finding of who, you know, fault or who, you know, told who or whatever, anything like that. This commission makes its determinations without regards to any of, I would say, what, what's immaterial to the question of whether or not the situation that's been presented is a violation of the Ethics Act. So we, we you know, this is not, not to pass judgment on anybody or anything who maybe you know, have had any part in why this matter was brought before us today. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Commissioner Albright. Thank you, Mr. Clark. We will move on now to item number two on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, I think these next items will go relatively uh, quick approval of minutes from the previous meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those minutes within your packet? I did, and the only correction I have is to the date on the minutes. I think they're still dated from February, but these were, I believe, May uh, 2021 meeting minutes that we had. That's noted. I can um, fix that, and you can make a motion to approve them as amended. I, oh, I will entertain such a motion. So moved. Second. Any, all in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposition? Okay, the motion passes. The minutes as uh, amended uh, ha have been approved. Item number three on the agenda for this evening, we have the ethics tip line report. Look at your agenda. Uh, it starts on page 10 of the agenda packet. Um, starts out with, with June for the previous month. Shows that one was resolved. Um, then you can see in July, uh, significant number were, were resolved. Nothing um, 
has the case manager of the ethics commission so it should uh, you know as i say it's uh, ethics tip line covers more than just ethics act violations so uh, it's nothing uh, in particular for the ethics commission to determine today okay great uh, if there's no questions from the commission on, on that item, we'll move on to item three or item four, I guess, in the uh, agenda, which is the library ethics policy memo. And I, I'll kick this to Evan again. Um, you'll recall that several years ago, the code of ordinances was updated and it required a look at each um, special purpose government entities uh, ethics act or internal ethics act and requires it to be at least as stringent as the general government ethics act and i believe that this this re re refers to that right evan yes in fact, uh, like evan mentioned back in 2017 um, the ethics act was added to, or it was amended to add special purpose governmental entities pursuant to uh, 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 kentucky revised statutes so it makes them um, in line with each other. Um, it includes special purpose governmental entities, includes um, such entities as the library. Um, and the Department of Lo for Local Government provides uh, a task with recording or uh, the collecting the required reports and posting um, which entities have uh, our special purpose government entities on their, on their website. So that's where we got that information from. Um, we reviewed back in 2018, reviewed the ethics. Uh, policy for the library to see if it was more or less stringent than LFECG's um, and the uh, ethics commission informed the library that it could uh, that it, that their policy at the time was not but that it could amend it in the future to make it at least as stringent as the ethics act um, they provided recently um, uh, a newly updated ethics policy um, and it um, as you can see, it's in the packet. It includes a definition of qualified adult, which is similar to um, one of our more one of the eth uh, ethics acts more recent uh, amendments um, to basically uh, take into consideration um, individuals within households that are um, particularly um, have a close connection with the officer employee, like they have, for instance, financially if they're financially inter interdependent. The legal beneficiary to the employer officer, and so that way they're stays, they're held to the same standards. Um, also, separates private interests from financial interests. Um, makes it so that way um, that the officers and employees have to disclose both private and financial interests instead of what was previously referred to as just private financial interests, um, which is a little bit different. Um, um, one of their changes was to mirror the contract conflicts of interest and in contract section that's in our ethics act um, to be similar so their policy is similar in, in that regard um, they added the word reasonably uh, to a uh, phrase could reasonably be inferred that the gift was intended to influence or could reasonably be expected to influence the officer um, in the performance of public duties, that's in the that's in the gift section. We, you know, as you know, Ethics Act has a gift section as well about um, what what gifts can and cannot be um, provided to employees, and for what reasons and what reasons you can't. Um, also limits the cost of meals allowed to the actual cost of the meal, um, which um, wasn't in there originally, but that mirrors the Ethics Act as well. So <clears throat> there are significant parts that now mirror the Ethics act um, and so it's at least as stringent as the ethics act but there are some parts that still are not um, the um, um, there's an omission um, as you know the ethics act has sections regarding um, practicing before the agency for a period of time after you, you don't they don't work there anymore um, so that that would be um, one way where it's not as stringent they can potentially practice before the agency um, should that situation come up um, it also doesn't uh, contain a prohibition on the representation of any person or business in connection with the matter before the agency so for instance um, a person couldn't um, go before the agency on behalf of somebody else um, except in, in certain matters according to our ethics act um, 
So that would be a suggestion to include that as well to the extent it occurs. Um, and then also, I think probably the, the, the biggest way is the, uh, um, and I think this was discussed in, in the, uh, um, back in, in, in 2018, if, if my memory serves me correctly, but uh, the, the fact that they have a, a, a section of their policy that allows for exceptions to, the, to their ethics policy makes it not as stringent as our ethics act is. Our ethics act doesn't provide any ability for anybody to have exceptions provided to them. Um, th th there's not a, a way to ask your division director or commissioner, for instance, um, if we're an exception to the policy and then um, l like there is for the, the library's policy. So that would be another suggested potential change to, um, that would reach, reach out to the library to provide. Those are, the, those are the three main changes that I think would make it more in line with the Ethics Act based on my review. Um, the ethics, their ex ethics, sorry, their, of their ex ethics policy, their, um, you know, their ethics policy was provided in the packet. So if you um, had had a chance to review, um, their their additions are in track changes form. So it helps show how what they changed, and, and as you can see, it, it's very much in line with what I had uh, discussed in my memo and in this meeting. So if you have any questions. Hey, I do not, Evan. I, I reviewed your recommendations and reviewed their their revisions, and I, I don't have any any reason to either disagree with your suggestions or add any more on my behalf. I agree. Does anybody have any feelings otherwise? Okay, hearing none, I think we'll probably need to move that you send this a letter that reflects the substance of what you have presented here tonight. So uh, it, does anybody want to move for that? Okay, so moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Any objections? Hearing none, Evan, that motion carries and we will ask you to please proceed as you have outlined this evening and in your memorandum. Thank you. Uh, item five on the agenda is the financial interest forms update. And then the item six is discussion of reviewing FIS. So if we could, I guess, is, is this Evan again, or, or maybe it's Mackenzie that might have the floor now? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> at least the first part. Um, so we have 15 people who still have outstanding um, FIS forms. Um, we sent out a letter basically saying that please turn in your FIS forms or you could be liable to fines, not at this time, but maybe the next time we send out a letter, um, just in more, you know, legal terms than that. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, so that's where we are right now. So um, I don't know um, if you guys want to send out another letter um, or give us the authority to send out another letter now or wait until the next meeting. Um, it's, it's up to you. They just have to be in before that. I mean, they should have been in in March, but um, it'd be nice to have them all before the end of the year. Okay, then my proposal, or I guess my thought process would be uh, and have a letter reissued notifying them of their continuing delinquency and with a statement, what, what, are, what are the potential amounts for penalties or fines for not complying with the commission's directive or not, require, not complying with turning in an FIS in the first place? Um, it's, it's up to you guys because um, the form that we actually send them says that uh, if they don't turn it in, they have to appear before the Ethics Commission and they're, at that point they are liable to fines. I'm not sure it's ever gotten that far. Um, so uh, we've never actually had to issue a fine before. Yeah, it, basically I think what we've done in the past is, and I think it's traditionally been towards the, one of the last meetings of the year, so the November meeting would be uh, the last meeting of the year, unless the special meetings uh, uh, decided on to have, um, would be to, um, and I think in the past what we've done is, is made orders that they, um, that they appear at, they, that they appear at the, at the last meeting of the year, um, or in lieu of that, um, like a, a show cause type of thing for all those people who are attorneys on this board, which I'm pretty sure is almost all of them. Um, 
the um, show cause order basically saying, you know, show up, explain why you're, um, uh, why you haven't, or, or in lieu of that, file, uh, file your, your financial interest statement. And then with knowledge that um, at the hearing, you could be charged with uh, um, monetary penalties. Up yep. to, I think it's $500. I remember that from, I think it was either last year or no, it was two years ago. We, we did something similar to that. So yeah, I, I would be in support of a uh, correspondence similar to that, saying that you were ordered to show cause at the next uh, commission meeting, but you can purge this show cause by simply filing your financial interest statement. Uh, I would say, let's do that prior. How about no by November 1st? Because that will be a few days before the next scheduled meeting. We can do that. Everybody okay with that? Do we send these just regular first class US mail? Or are they certified or? They're certified. Yeah, show cause order or show cause, you probably have to make sure they received it in order for a due process to, to pass. Okay, so I suppose we should uh, have a motion to that effect that uh, reflects the decision to uh, request that McKenzie and her team prepare letters to the delinquent uh, financial interest statement folks, instructing them to either return their uh, FISs on or before November 1st, uh, otherwise appear at the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Ethics Commission and explain yourself, basically. So moved. Second, anyone? I'll second. That second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Evan, would you mind drafting that letter for us? Yep. Thank you. Okay, so that motion carries. And I think the final item on the agenda is the discussion of reviewing FIS. Um, Abby wanted me to speak on this. Um, we, our office doesn't review these, like the council clerk's office doesn't review these. It's the job of the ethics board and we haven't been doing that. Um, so that's something that we should probably talk about doing at some point. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point, Mackenzie. So these are collected annually by the clerk's office and then they are retained, presumably for some yeah. time, but at, mm -hmm. at this point, and in, in at least your understanding, there's nobody actually looking at the content of the financial interest statements. Yeah, when we get them, they go in a folder, um, like everybody gets their own folder. And um, because we're not law or or you guys or anything, or we have, like I have no legal background, so <laughs> I just get them and I put them in a folder. I don't interpret what is on the actual form, so. Hmm. Now here, I guess, so th this is my concern about anybody associated with the commission reviewing those forms is that do we, in essence, we have act, are those financial interest statements public records that any member of the, of the public could have access to and review? Um, go ahead, Evan. Um, just reviewing the Ethics Act, it, uh, um, yeah, we have to ensure that the statements are available for public inspection um, um, to the extent that they, uh, there wouldn't be parts that might be exempted for uh, privacy uh, concerns such as like personal addresses, stuff like that, um, uh, phone numbers. Okay, so they're available subject to other open records restrictions as far yeah. as buyers or other confidential information, okay. Linda, did you have uh, something to add? Yes, I think just over time with the change in the council clerk's office, the process probably has just gotten lost. So what normally happens is that the clerk's office does look at the form to make sure that all of the spaces are filled out and if the person has put anything in the conflict of interest section. And if they do, then that information is reported to the Ethics Commission, or if there are any sections on the form that aren't filled out, that's also reported because we write back to them to say, hey, you didn't fully complete your form, this is what you need to do. But I think just over the years, that may have just gotten lost because we changed people several times in the clerk's office, I think. Mm -hmm. 
So it hasn't always been, I don't want you all to think that all this time we haven't been reviewing these forms because that hasn't always been the case. Yeah, there's been some turnover in the clerk's office. Okay, so what, what action, I guess, would the commission be interested in taking on this particular note? If it's already within the clerk's office, does the clerk have the, or somebody in the clerk's office have the authority to review these and go back to the procedure that may have been followed at some point in the past? Yeah, because there's no, it's really no legal review. You're just looking at the sections to make sure that they filled in all of the sections. And if they note anything in the conflict of interest section, that's reported to the commission. So it's not as though some, the clerk's office is being asked to make some type of legal determination. Okay. So basically what, what would be requested is that the commission authorize the clerk to conduct such a review. And if there is something that there, that I guess requires the attention or that they deem to be Need, needs the attention of the commission to address and it be brought to our attention? Is that what we're getting at? Um, I think there was more to it than that. I can't really, I just, I think Abby was worried that we were just putting these away. Like, you know, we're looking at them to check to see if they were all filled out and they had signatures and everything but um, Abby just wanted to make sure that we were doing exactly what we we're supposed to be doing with them. Hmm. Okay, well, it sounds like to me that Glenda knows quite well what, what is supposed to be doing with them in terms of the review process. And I, I don't think, it does sound like it's relatively high level and you might already be doing it. And so I would say as the commission standpoint, we would encourage the law department and the clerk's office to kind of uh, iron out these details and, and re reinstitute the procedures that have worked and, and been in place in the past to ensure that any conflicts of interest that are actually noted and sent in are then appropriately flagged and passed on pursuant to common protocol and, and the ethics act. Does anybody have any additional thoughts or comments on this? I'm not sure we, we need a motion on it necessarily, but uh, I think we can just uh, kind of go about it that way if we're, if we're all comfortable with it. Yeah, that sounds fine. Okay, um, I think that was the last item on the agenda. I, if anybody has any, anything additional, obviously, please uh, feel free to chime in. Thank you again. Uh, was it, how do you say your name, young man? Keon. Jan, okay, I was going to butcher that, so I'm glad I asked. But thanks for coming. Um, I have an additional question. Yeah, sure. Uh, where do I find the written opinion of uh, the commission for this meeting? Uh, mentioned in the first topic. We will we will make sure you get a copy. Um, I'll I'll send it to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Otherwise, awesome. available in the future in the, at the uh, council clerk's office. Yeah, Kion, what happens is that we have Mr. Thompson usually drafts or creates a draft of any opinion that the commission has to render. And then we are usually will at least take a quick look at it and sign off on it that it reflects our discussion. And then it's sent to the people who were involved in that particular request for an advisory opinion, if that makes sense. Thank you. All right, yep. Well, thanks for coming. Um, you know, wasn't wasn't. Ask Keon a question. Are you going for Eagle Scout, Keon? Yes. How awesome is Good that? Good luck. Good luck. I'm trying to be Eagle by Christmas of 2022. Hey, guess what? We're on your team. We're voting. We're rooting for you. Let <laughs> us know how. Let us know if you make it. By your goal. Okay, I will. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. Um, I think that concludes the meeting. I will now entertain a motion to uh, conclude the meeting. Um, so moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, thank you all very much, and we'll see you next time. All right. Good evening. Thank Bye -bye. you. Okay. Stay safe, everybody. Yep. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye.